Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 23 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about inserting, updating, and deleting data from Grid View using SQL Data Source Control. Basically, we want to do all the CRUD operations. You know, we want to be able to select data from a table and display that within the Grid View Control. We want to edit, delete, and then we also want to insert records into a database table using this grid view control. And if you notice, we are actually using the footer of the grid view control to perform insert operation. Okay. And also notice that we want to validate data while we insert and edit data. So when I am inserting, you know, we don't want to allow users to be submitting, uh, you know, blank name, gender, or city. The same is the case when we are editing data. For this demo, we'll be using TBL employee table. So let's flip to Visual Studio drag and drop a grid view control onto the web form. Let's auto format that. Let's choose brown sugar theme. Let's drag and drop SQL data source control onto the web form. Let's configure this. Let's choose our connection string from web.config file. Click next. Select TBL employee table. We want to select all the rows. So select star from TBL employee. Click on the advanced tab. Click on Generate, Insert, Update, and Delete checkbox because we want to enable editing, updating, and deleting on the grid view control. Click OK. Click Next. Test your query. Click Finish. Now let's associate this grid view control with SQL Data Source Control. Since we have, you know, edit and delete statements, you know, we have these options enabled. You know, enable editing, enable deleting. So we have edit and delete buttons. Okay, so this, that should enable editing and deleting. Now, if you look at the slide, we are using the footer control of the grid view to actually perform insert operations. So we need to display the footer control. And to do that, by default, you know, the footer is not visible. So go to the properties of the grid view control. And there is a property called show footer. Simply set that to true, and we will have the footer visible. Okay, now look at this, you know, we have this link button, insert link button, within the employee ID column, whereas text box control within the name column, you know, a drop down list within gender. So basically, if I want to include these controls, you know, in these columns of the grid view control, now I need to convert these columns into template fields. By default, you know, the grid view control has generated bound fields, you know, this employee ID name, gender, and city. By default, these are bound fields. Now, if I have to include a footer template so that I can include these link buttons and other controls, then I need to convert these bound fields into template fields. And there are two ways to do that. We can change the HTML directly here, or we can use the designer. You know, that's an easier option. So let me select on the, you know, click on grid view task and then click on this edit columns link. And then from the selected fields, you know, click on employee ID column. I want to convert this into bound, I mean, a template field. So click on this link, convert this field into a template field, which should automatically convert that bound field into a template field. And do the same thing with name, gender, and city as well. So that should automatically convert these four, you know, bound fields into template fields. So if I flip the web form now to the design, uh, you know, source mode, look at that. Everything is now converted into a template field. Okay, but then, you know, obviously, if you look at this gender bound field, you know, we don't want to display text box control as the editing interface. We want a drop down list control as the editing interface. So, what we need to do is replace the text box control with a drop down list control. So, I'm going to get rid of that, go to the toolbox, drag and drop a drop down list control. And then, obviously, we need three items within this drop down list. What are they? select gender, male, and female. Those are the three things that we need to display. So let's you know, format that properly. Press Control K and D. All right. And then obviously, when I put this row in edit mode, I want the gender of that person to be selected within the drop-down list by default. And to do that, we need to set the selected value property. So selected value is equal to whatever is being returned by this bind method. Okay, so let's actually copy that and paste it right there. Okay, let's copy this and paste it. Okay, 
All right, so at this time we should have editing functionality working as expected. Now what else we need to do? We need to include, you know, the link button within the footer of every, you know, link button within the footer of employee ID column, you know, along the same lines, text box, gender, and city within the respective footers of those columns. So now when we click edit here, look at that, I have a drop down list here. And look at the values, they get properly selected as well. Okay, so within the footer control, let's include the link button. So, obviously, we want the link button in employee ID column of the grid view control. So, employee ID column is this one. So, here within that template field, let's include a footer template. Let's drag and drop a link button there. And let's give it a meaningful name link button insert. And then we want the text on that link button as insert. Okay, so now if I flip this web form, look at that, I get the link button. Next, we need a text box control, a drop down list, and a text box control. So let's flip this again to the source mode. Let's actually get to, you know, the name bound field. So this is the name template field. And then within here, we need to have a footer template and we need a text box control. So let's drag and drop a text box control. And then let's give it a meaningful name, txt name. And we want the same thing for city as well. So let's skip gender for now because we need a drop down list within the gender. So we'll come back to that. So let's go to city and then paste it there. And let's give this a meaningful name. Let's call this txt city. And within the footer template of gender, we need a drop down list. So let's drag and drop a drop down list there. Actually, we can copy and paste this. Okay. But we don't want any, you know, value to be selected within the drop down list when we insert a row because everything will be blank. If you look at the slide, you know, it's a new row. So select gender will be selected by default and then the user needs to select the gender of the person when he is inserting. So we don't want anything to be selected. So I'm going to get rid of that property there. Okay, so at this point, we should get the interface, you know, the insert employee interface. So we get that. So gender, we have them. You know, all we need to do is when I click insert, we need to insert that into the database table. But before that, let's take care of validations. Look at this. We want to validate data when inserting and editing. So we need some validation controls, required field validator controls. And so obviously when editing, you know, obviously employee ID is not editable. So we need, we don't need any validation control there. But name is editable. So we need a validation control there. So let's I mean, just to speed things up, I have, you know, a required field validator here configured with all the properties. I'll just explain those properties. Let's format this properly. Control KD to format that. All right. So required field validator. So I've given it a meaningful name, RFV, required field validator. Edit name is the ID. Run it is equal to server. Error message name is a required field. Control to validate. We want to validate this text box one. Okay, and text is asterisk for color. I want a red color, you know, so that's why we have set it to red. So this is when editing, you know, an employee's record. But when I am inserting an employee's record, then we have a text box here. So we need to validate this as well. So I'm just going to paste that there. So required field validator. And I'm going to call this, you know, give it a different ID. You cannot have two controls with the same ID. So since this is for validating when we are inserting a, a new employee, so I'm going to call this RFV insert name. Okay. So run it is equal to server. Name is a required field. Control to validate. It's going to be TXT name. Okay. So let's put it there and text for color. All right. Next, we need to validate, you know, the gender. When editing, we want to make sure that a per, you know the user has selected uh, gender from the drop-down list. Except select gender, he need to select either male or female. Okay, so let's put that there. So RFV, this is going to be edit gender. Okay, because this is within the edit item template. This template will be used when we are editing a row. 
okay and obviously this is gender so the error message is going to be gender is a required field and we are validating drop down list one so that's the control to validate text is equal to star four color is equal to red there's one more property that we have to set when we are validating you know selections within the drop down list that is initial value so what's the initial value going to be within the drop down list it's select gender if somebody selects select gender from the drop down list then we know for sure that's not a valid gender so that's the initial value and we want to do the same thing when we are inserting data so obviously we need to have a footer template so within the footer template we need to have this validation control so let's paste it right there so we are actually again here there's a problem because look at this drop down list the ID is drop down list one here it's drop down list one so let's give this a meaningful name DDL gender because we cannot have two drop down list controls with, with this you know two controls with the same ID All right so here let's change the ID of the required field validator let's actually call this RFV required field validator insert gender okay run it is equal server server error message gender is a required field and the control to validate is DDL gender so let's put it there text asterisk four color red initial value select gender finally we have to do that for city so let's copy and paste that there let's copy the required field validator from name and then use it for city but we have to change the IDs so let's paste it right here and required field validator this is going to be edit city so let's give that meaningful name there edit city run it is equal to server error message city is a required field control to validate we want to validate text box 3 so let's set that as the control to validate text asterisk for color red and then let's copy and paste this finally in the footer template so this one is going to be RFV required field validator insert city run it is equal to server error message city is a required field control to validate txt city so most of it is actually copy paste you know text asterisk for color red so we are done and finally we also need a validation summary control because look at this you know those asterisk uh, you know symbols are displayed next to the controls where the validations have failed but detailed error messages are displayed in the validation summary control so I'm going to drag and drop a validation summary control next to the grid view control so let's put a validation summary control and again within validation summary control we want the error messages to be in red color so let's set four color to red so with those changes let's run this now so at this time we should have validations in place while editing as well as while inserting so I click edit look at that I blank out name and then I click update I get this name required which is as expected but look at this you know the validation controls that are present with an insert are also fired we didn't expect that to happen because I'm editing a row you now I'm updating a row only these validation controls should be fired now if I select gender and try to update look at that I get that again I remove that so totally you know when I am clicking update only these set of validation control should fire whereas when I click insert these set of validation control should fire so basically whether I click insert or update look at that all of them are fired which is not working as expected so basically we need to group this insert button with these set of validation controls that I have within the footer okay and the update button should be linked with these set of controls that we have within that row when I'm editing that okay so let's actually group this insert button with these validation controls and to do that we can make use of validation groups we discussed about validation groups in detail in ASP.NET video tutorial so please check those videos All right so let's use validation group and then group you know the link button that's there here and then these validation controls and then we also need to associate that to a validation summary control so let's do that now so within the footer template I have this link button so link but every you know this link button has got a property called validation group I'm going to set that to insert 
and I'm going to use the same group name for all the validation controls that are present within the footer control. Okay, so for the validation control here, I'm going to set the same group. So that's for name, and this is going to be for gender required field validator. And finally, for city. Okay, and then we need to set that for validation summary control as well. Okay, but then we will have another problem now, but it's easy to fix. Okay, so now I click insert, look at that, I get the error messages as expected. I click edit, and then let's blank that row. And then I try to click update. Look at that. I don't get the validation summary information here, but I get those little asterisk symbols indicating that there is a problem. On the other hand, other hand, look at this. When I click insert, look at this. Only these three validation controls are fired, and and the respective detailed error messages are displayed here. But then that doesn't happen when I do, you know, when I click this update button. Why? Because we don't have a validation summary control to display those validation error messages. Because remember, we have changed the validation group name of this validation summary control. So now this validation summary control will only be used with validation controls that are present in the footer. Okay, so let's have another validation summary control and knock off the group. So it's going to work with the you know rest of the validation controls while we update the data. So when now when I run this, you know the validation should work as expected. So I click edit Let's blank this out. And let's try to click update. Look at that. It's working. And look at that. It's working as expected. So I cancel that. I click insert. You know, everything working as expected. Now, all that is left out is when I click this insert button, we need to insert uh, you know, whatever row information that I enter here into the database table using this grid view interface. So let's see how to do that. Obviously, that should happen when I click this link button insert, which is present in the footer template of employee ID template field. So let's go to the footer template. So this is the link button. And if you look at the ID, it is LB insert. And let's generate the event handler, the click event handler for that one. Since this is a link button, I'm going to say link button LB insert is equal to new link button. So LB insert dot click plus equals. So that's the event handler. So let's copy. OK, now instead of hooking it dynamically, since we already have a link button there, I'm going to use this event handler method and specify that within the footer template you know using the on click attribute so on click what we want to do we want to call that method lb insert underscore click within the code behind file so obviously what we have to do here write code to insert row into the database table okay so obviously what we need to do when we click this insert is basically retrieve the name gender and city values and then give it to you know insert parameters of SQL data source control. Remember when we were configuring SQL data source control, we generated, you know, we checked that checkbox, generate insert update and delete statements. So that has generated these statements, I mean delete command, select command, update command, and insert commands. And along with that, we also have insert parameters, for example. So if you look at this insert command, insert into TBL employee, name, gender, city, for these three columns, we want to supply values to these three parameters, because this is a parameterized query. And so obviously, if you look at the parameter names, they are name, gender, and city. We need to supply those values to these parameters. Okay, and then we can use that SQL data source one control to do the insert for us. Okay, so let's see how to retrieve the value. So where these values for those parameters are coming from, from these text boxes and a drop down list that are present within the footer control. Okay, so these are the para insert parameters of SQL data source one control. So I'm going to say SQL data source one dot insert parameters. And this is a collection, so you can, you know, retrieve a parameter by ID or by name. Okay, so I can use the name. One of the, you know, one of the parameters is name. So where do I get the value for this parameter? So 
a value for this is going to come from the grid view control you know within the footer of this grid view control we have this text box control so we need to retrieve it from there so to do that we have to use you know a little bit of code here so grid view one dot footer control I mean footer row so within the footer row we need to find a control so if you remember within the footer control we have given you know meaningful IDs for example to retrieve the name we need to use so within the footer control there's a text box with name txt name that's going to store the value that we type in so we need to retrieve it from that text box txt name is the ID of the text box control so we have to say find control with name txt text box so let's copy that and paste that within the find control method and notice this find control method this is actually going to return an object you know a control back but what are we expecting out of it a text box so let's typecast that to be of type text box and then use the text property to retrieve whatever value that is present within that so it's as simple as that so let me get this in two lines so we can see it so all we are doing here is we are populating we are setting a value for the insert name parameter and we have to do the same thing for gender and city so SQL data source one insert parameters you know the second parameter is going to be gender where is gender going to coming from uh, gender is coming from DDL gender drop-down list okay and that's a drop-down list so I need to typecast that to be of type drop-down list and drop-down list has the selected value property to retrieve you know whatever value that the user has selected and finally what we need to do we need to set the parameter value for city so let's do the same thing here the name of the parameter is city and it's going to be a text box oh. and it's called txt city is the name of the control and that's a text box control so that's it so we have set the values for parameters finally there's one more thing that we need to do the SQL data source control has got a method called insert so when you call this method that's when the SQL data source control will take these parameters and then execute the insert command so the SQL data source control has got an insert command so that will be executed when we call that insert method on the SQL data source one control so this is the insert statement alright so that's all there to it so let's run this now we should see it working as expected so we should be able to you know edit data so I want to change Mary to maybe Mary 3 and her gender from male to female okay from New York to NY and update that so that works as expected now if I want to insert a new employee let's call Jane female and let's say Sydney let's insert look at that that gets inserted and just to make sure it's inserted within the database table you see that it's right there okay and obviously validations are working as expected as well okay so in this video we have basically discussed about all the database CRUD operations using a grid view selection insertion updation and deletion Okay, in our next video, we'll discuss about doing exactly the same thing but using object data source control. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.